Hey, Tim Unkert here, and in this video, we're going to make a program that uh, will allow you to input the uh, coefficients a, b, and the constant c from a quadratic, and it will allow you to see if there are any real solutions. Okay, and we're going to build this program uh, using PHP and Bootstrap primarily, and since it's the mid of September, it's September 15th, um, and Halloween is coming up in a month and a half away, I'm going to be using Emacs with Evil Mode and uh, Doom. And today I'm going to use a Doom theme, Shades of Purple. I'll be doing Doom themes probably in Dracula and so on and so forth and using Evil Mode, of course, up until Halloween. Okay, so uh, let's get started. All right, so I've got my terminal up here and I've uh, gone and I have a XAMPP installed, by the way. So my development setup, I have XAMPP installed and I'm in HDDocs and that's where you put your um, files. So I'm going to make a directory called math. I'm going to CD into math and I'm going to then make a directory called quadratics uh, dash YT for YouTube. I'm going to cd into quadratics-yt, and I'm going to create some files. I'm going to need an index.php, and I'm going to need a form.php, and I'm going to need a form handler.php. Okay, now I'm going to make a directory, so mkdir, uh, let's call it inc for includes, and we'll cd into inc. And then we're going to create a function, a math.functions.php. So I'm going to do this with functions. And maybe if I feel like it, we'll do math classes.php. So we'll do functional programming and object oriented programming to make this program work. Two different ways of doing it. Okay. I'm going to cd back one or cd dot dot. That's going to bring me up. Uh, a directory. And now what I'm going to do is just type Emacs and a space and a dot. That is going to put me into Dear Ed. And you'll see it pops up with that shades of purple theme. And I can use the J and the K to move up. And I remapped the J, J to go from insert mode back to normal mode. Okay. So anyways, uh, I'm going to go to index.php and I'm going to do Alt X to do a command and make sure emit mode is enabled. Uh, and I think I have automatically enabled web mode, but let's just check. Uh, PHP modes should be enabled as well. So I'm going to go into an insert mode and do a exclamation point and then control Y comma, and that did nothing. So let's try that again. Control J. It's still not working. Control J. Ah. Let's do HTML, escape, control J. All right, we're gonna have to type out the HTML. Um, but I can use DD for delete, that's awesome. All right, so let's just go instead and go to Bootstrap 5. And we'll go here and we're gonna get some things. And maybe it's best that I don't have my Emmet mode quite working with my evil mode just yet. Halloween's still a little bit far away. Okay, so um, I wanna get the CSS and the JavaScript, but we have to have a framework, okay? So let's type it out. We'll go into insert mode in evil mode, and uh, I'm gonna type, type HTML, okay? Now I'm gonna go back and I go, hmm. I'll go back, back, BB, go two words back, and I forgot to capitalize doc type. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go V and go into visual mode. And now I'm going to do shift and that little curly, little curly thing. And boom, it's capitalized. Now I'm going to do shift A, capital A, to move to insert line to the end of the line. I'm going to do an HTML tag to open and an HTML tag to close. And wow, Emacs just closed it like fast like that. Okay, now I'm going to do JJ to go back into insert mode. And I'm going to go up, or normal mode, and I'm going to go up and go and create the head of a file. 
And I'm going to close out my head. And all I have to do is that bracket and a slash and closes it out. JJ, I'm going to go back up. This is quickly becoming my favorite editor, Emacs. Maybe over Vim, because I'm using Vim in Emacs. Could I be a Space Max user? Perhaps. I don't know. Maybe Doom Emacs. I don't know. Okay. Uh, I don't have Doom Emacs installed. I just have a bunch of Doom themes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to um, do some meta tags. So let's make a comment. And you make a comment with that square bracket and then an exclamation point and then dash dash. Oh, and look at that. It completes the comment for me. That is pretty awesome. Okay, and I'm going to say that this is the metas. Okay, metas? I don't know. Anyways, uh, so we're going to have a meta tag. And we're going to have this meta tag called meta car set equals UTF dash eight. And then we'll close out the tag, but I'm going to do JJ and back, 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 and then visual mode, go for it. Shift in that little curly thing. Cause I want it capitalized. Okay. Shift a to move to the end of the line. Pretty sweet. This Emacs setup is working great for me. Okay. Let's let's get going. I'm, I'm being a bit of a goof. All right. So I also want to create a viewport uh, meta tag with the name of viewport. And for that, um, what I want is to have a content equal to width equals device dash width initial dash scale equals 1.0. And that's going to close out that meta tag. We should have a description tag, but since I'm not actually putting the site up and it's not going to get indexed by Google, I'm going to leave that one out. But it's good practice. And we're also going to have a title tag. And notice how it just closes out. I think that's a that web mode that I have installed. You can install that via Meple. Melpa. Meple. Melpa. All right. Anyways, so I'm going to have a title and it's going to be called Quadratics. Okay. And now I'm going to go to the end of the line. And now I want to make a comment. And in the comment, um, I'm going to put that I'm putting in the bootstrap five CSS. Okay. Uh, now, notice how I did that quickly. I got to the end of the line real quick. What I did was JJ shift A. Okay, that moved me to the end of the line. Then I hit return back on the next line. Okay, let's copy this CSS here. It's copied. Boom. Uh, and then paste it in, okay? And shift, okay, move it over. Shift, do, do, the little arrow moves it over, okay? Formatting it very nicely. Nice, clean, good code, okay? Gonna go down here and I'm gonna create a body tag and I'm gonna close out the body tag and all I have to do is a little left symbol and the slash and it boom, it closes for me. Very nice. Let's uh, do two DD to delete those two blank lines. Okay, now I'm gonna go up here and what I'm going to do is actually, I'm gonna go right before the end of the closing the body tag and I'm gonna make a comment that, and that auto completes the comment, it's great. Uh, bootstrap JS bundle. We're gonna put that in even though I probably won't use it. Okay, so now I'm gonna copy the bundle and Escape, paste, shift, and move it over, okay? Uh, whoops, JJ, I want to go back. Okay, now we're in the body. And I want to div with a class equal to container. And I want to have a margin top of five and a padding top of five. And now I'm going to close out that div, JJ, and then go up and create another div with a class equal to row. You need that in Bootstrap. And let's close out that div. Whoops. JJ up there. Shift A. Move to the end of the line. And then I finally want a div with a class equal to a column dash with a breakpoint of medium four. And then another class offset breakpoint of medium four. Okay. And let's call, close out that div. Whoops and go back up here. And now I'm gonna create a form and the action I want is going to be form.php and the method that I want is going to be post. Okay, and 
I'm going to go down here and close up my form. And now what I want to do, um, and this indent is great. This is really nice. In the form, I want to create a div with a class equal to margin bottom three. That's going to give me a little bit of a margin bottom. And that's what they use in the examples in Bootstrap 5. So I'm just going to go with it. Uh, no need to reinvent the form, if you will. All right, so I'm going to have a label for, uh, and we're going to have a label for A, okay? And close out the label, uh, and we'll just say, enter the value of A, okay? JJ, shift A to move to the end of the line. And then I want to have an input, um, with a type equal to number. And uh, I want a name is A, and I want an ID is A. And uh, we're gonna close out the input. Okay, I'm gonna do JJ, move down V for visual mode, come up zero to move to the beginning of the line, Y to yank that, shift A to move here, JJ back here, paste it in, boom. All right, now up here, I'm gonna do RB. RB and then RB, okay? RB, RB, okay? Okay, go back here, JGA, paste, boom, okay? Uh, RC, 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 okay? Uh, colon W to write the file, okay? So we've got our form doing pretty well here. Okay, so now what I want to do is go down here and I want to create another div, class equal to margin bottom three also. This time, uh, I'm going to close out the div, JJ shift A, move up there, and we're going to have an input with a type equal to submit, uh, a name equal to submit, an ID equal to submit, and uh, we're going to have a class. We're going to add a few classes. One is BTN and the other is BTN primary, which will take advantage of the bootstrap uh, uh, classes. All right, so we're going to save that. Now let's bring up our browser up here. And uh, on a Chromebook, which I'm using, I'm going to go penguin.linux.test. Uh, that brings me to this dashboard here. But we actually remember our path is going to be math. And then I think I did quadratics uh, dash yt. Okay, and that brings us to our form. Now the button probably needs a little spacing on there. So let's do that, okay? So if I go down here, I can do a margin top of three. Let's save it and let's control R to refresh and that moves it down nicely. We also probably want to tell people what to do because uh, they just come to this page and they're like, what do I do? Okay. Um, so we're going to go up here right under the row and we're going to have a paragraph with a class equal to text dash center. And, um, We'll close up the paragraph tag and in text uh, dash center, what we're going to do is explain what to do. So we're going to say enter the coefficients, uh, coefficients of the quadratic A and B and enter in the constant value C below. Okay. Uh, notice the comma placement, good grammar. I used to be a teacher, not an English teacher, but a math teacher, it's still important. All right, anyways, JJ and, whoops, JJ fast, and then uh, colon W to write it, okay? Let's go over here, control R to refresh. Boom, we've got some directions as to what to do. All right, so now uh, this entrance page is set up now we've got to have our form set up. So let's um, go into Dear Ed, and we're going to use K to move up to form. And here we're going to start with a doc type of HTML, even though it's a PHP file, JJ, back, back, 
uh, V. Uh, we're going to go forward a word and then back a couple letters. Shift and that curly thing to the little approximately to get the capital. And then Shift A to move to the end. Uh, we're going to do, I want to make sure, hold on. Yeah, we're going to do an HTML tag. And actually, you know what? I think uh, I want to make sure. Uh, let's save this. Whoops. Control G to quit out of that. Uh, Alt X. Let's uh, make sure that web mode is enabled. And let's also make sure that Emmet mode is enabled, even though I'm not really using it. Okay. Uh, anyways. Hmm. All right. We're going to do an HTML tag. Yep. And then close out the HTML tag JJ to move up. Again, uh, we want to have a head of our document and close the head. And we want to have a body of the document and then close the body. OK, up here we want our typical um, meta tags. We only have to do this for one other file because we're going to do the form handler is going to be mostly just PHP. So let's just uh, bear with us. And OK, so we're going to put in a comment that we're doing our metas again. And what were those? Those two meta tags were meta car set equals UTF-8. Uh, again, escape, go back, back, uh, V, um, and then go forward two letters, shift ampersand, or curly bracket to raise it up, and then close out the tag. And then we also want to have a tag meta name equals viewport. And because for this one, what we're going to do is we are going to have the result come up here. So we want to have this one styled nice. So we have device with, uh, with equals device with initial scale equals 1.0. Okay. Title will be um, form of the quadratics. And all right. So now we want to have our bootstrap uh, five CSS. Okay, and um, we're going to have to paste that in again. So we'll go over to the bootstrap. Uh, I want to copy the CSS in, uh, escape, paste, shift, forward arrow key twice, uh, and then shift A to get to the end of the line. Actually, JJ, I think I'm done with the head of my document, and actually 2DD to delete that empty space, DD to empty, delete that one. Um, let's go back to JJ and we'll go back here and we are going to uh, do bootstrap uh, JS here, even though we're probably not gonna use it, it's just good practice to put it in there. We wanna include it, um, copy the bundle. And again, this is just for testing purposes. We're not actually deploying the site. Otherwise we'd probably want the files ourselves, okay? Just to clarify. All right, JJ paste, shift, forward arrow twice, get it nice and good. Uh, go up, okay, insert mode, div with a class equal to container, and close out the div, JJ, shift A, move up, div. Ah, we forgot something. What did I forget? Okay, so I want a margin top equal to five, a padding top equal to five. Okay, now I want a div with a class equal to row. We need that in Bootstrap. Close out the div, JJ, uh, up one, shift A, move in there. Uh, and then now we have a div with a class equal to column breakpoint medium, four columns across, offset breakpoint medium, four columns across. Okay, uh, and let's close that out. Okay, so now JJ, uh, shift A, move up, and we're going to create our PHP tags. And okay, so we have the opening and closing PHP tag. And I'm going to say include once, and we're going to have to include the form handler.php. And that's all we have to do for this file. So JJ colon W to write the file. All right, uh, this is going nicely now. So now we need our form handler. Okay, so let's go back to Dear Ed. And uh, we want our form handler. And we're going to open our PHP tag. 
uh, actually, hold on one, one sec. We want to make sure that we've enabled uh, Emmet mode and that we've enabled web mode. Okay. Uh, now I want PHP. So now you see how it completes it when I have web mode enabled. That makes it nice and easier myself. All right. So I'm going to say if is set uh, super global post. So I'm going to do lowercase now, but I don't want lowercase. All right. So what do I do? I go back and boom, capitals. All right. Now I'm just showing off. Um, okay. But within here, we have to have square brackets and we have to have the submit. Okay. And then we close that out. Uh, and then we've got to close that one out. And so if this condition is true, what we want is uh, to set some variables. So we're going to say that variable A is equal to, again, the post. And I can just write capitals there. And we're looking for the value A. And then let's JJ, and then we'll yank, yank, paste, paste. All right. RB, RB, RC. So R is replace in normal mode. Um, so we've gotten that done, and then let's do 3DD. And we've got this all nice. So we've got our PHP and then 4DD and DD. Uh, so we've got our first opening um, variable set. Okay, I'm going to do some other PHP tags down here, and I'm going to say include once. And then we're going to give the path. So the path is going to be to the includes file. That's going to be the math.functions.php. Okay, and we're going to close that out and then JJ and colon W to save that. Now, Alt X, go back to Dear Ed. Uh, come up here. We're going to go JJ down to the includes fol folder. Go in there. We're doing math functions. So we'll go in there. Okay, so now I'm going to, uh, first off, sorry. Let's enable web mode. And uh, yeah, we just enabled web mode, I think, twice. I don't know if that's going to affect things. Um, yeah, nah, seems to be the same. OK, so now we've got our functions. All right. So with the quadratic, what we need to have is a function that determines the discriminant. Now, the, the discriminant is the part under the square root of the quadratic equation. So if you have a quadratic equation, it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. The b squared minus 4ac is your discriminant. So let's create a function that calculates the discriminant. Okay, so we're going to call a function discriminant. Okay, and we're going to take in a, b, and c. Okay, and let's just close it out, close out the function there. Uh, and in with inside the function, um, we need to figure out what that is. So we're going to create a variable. Let's call it disc, and that is going to uh, equal. Well, we're going to have pow the variable b squared minus four times the variable a times the variable c. Okay, and JJ, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to return the variable DISC. Okay. All right. Good, good. Okay. So now um, we have to determine if we have uh, a situation where we have two solutions, one solution, or zero solutions. So with the discriminant, if you have two solutions, um, the discriminant has to be positive. If the discriminant is equal to zero, there's only one solution. And if the discriminant is less than zero, there are no real solutions. There are complex solutions, but there are no real solutions. Now, if you think about this with negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, so the square root of the discriminant, if that is zero, then you have plus or minus zero. If you have a negative number under the square root sign, you get an imaginary number. So it's plus or minus an imaginary number because you can't multiply any number by itself and get a negative number. That's why it's imaginary, even though you use imaginary and complex numbers in real world situations. 
Mind blown. Okay, anyways, so we created this function. Let's uh, clear out a bunch of space here. I'm gonna do 7DD and, wow, I actually guessed it right. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to Dear Ed. I'm just using the arrow keys to move through Dear Ed on the bottom here. And we're gonna go up here, let's go up and let's go back to the form handler. Okay, so we're going to get the value of the discriminant. So let's now open the PHP tags again, and we're gonna to have to have some if else statements. So we're gonna say if the discriminant is greater than zero, well then we're gonna to have to call some function, okay? So let's call some function, let's call it uh, two solutions. I'm gonna do this in camel case. Uh, and we're going to pass in A, B, and um, let's actually go up here, JJ, and let's say that the, uh, no, we don't want to say discriminant. We want to say, uh, let's say the JJ, and then let's just capitalize this, the discriminant. Okay, so the discriminant is going to equal to the discriminant function. Uh, I didn't even spell it right. Hold on. The discriminant is going to equal the discriminant function. Okay. And uh, when we pass in the variables A, B, and C. Okay, so if that is equal to zero, then, uh, or is greater than zero rather, we're gonna call the two solutions function, which is going to take in A, B, and the discriminant. What are the chances I actually type everything right? Okay, so anyways, we're gonna close that out. Um, no, we're not gonna close it out, what am I doing? Okay, so we're gonna call that function, all right, we're also gonna have an else if, and that case is gonna be the discriminant. Uh, if that is equal to zero, well, then we're going to call another function, and this function is going to be called one solution, and that's gonna take in A, B, and the discriminant. And I use control N for that autocomplete there. Pretty nice, huh? All right, so we're gonna move down here and then we also have an else statement. So else, uh, we are gonna call, um, now we're just gonna echo something. Echo, there are no solutions, okay? And let's close that out. And let's, while I'm thinking of this, let's go up here and Actually, no, no. Let's go here and say that um, solution is equal to two solutions. And let's um, echo the solution, okay? And then we'll go down here, go back, back. Uh, we'll say solution is equal to one solution in this case. Okay, and again, let's... Uh, you know, just go up here, we'll yank, yank this line and paste it below, okay? And so we'll echo the solution uh, in that case. Otherwise, um, we're gonna echo that there are no, and this should be real solutions, okay? And let's do a 3DD to neaten that up a little bit. Okay, so we've got our if else statement neaten up, but we need to create some functions. Uh, so we need to go back to our dear Ed, uh, and we're going to go into the includes, into the math functions, and we need to create some more functions. So there's going to be the function uh, two solutions, which again, it's going to take in A, it's going to take in B, and it's going to take in the discriminant. Okay, and um, all right, so what we're going to say here is that uh, and we may have to think about this because we're we're returning. Yeah, we're gonna have to think about this. All right, so we're gonna say that the lesser 
uh, solution is equal to, um, that's going to equal to negative B. So negative one times B and then minus, and then we're going to do power and it's going to be the discriminant uh, raised to the 0.5. That's a half power. And I'm going to go JJ, going to go back, 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 back. Insert a parenthesis here, JJ, shift A, move to the end, insert a parenthesis here, and then we divide it by two times A. Okay, so that's that line, JJ, and then YY to paste, and instead of greater solution, we're going to have, or lesser solution, we're going to have greater solution. Okay, uh, and we're going to go forward here, and all we have to do is change this into a plus. That's it. Okay, but now we got to think, what are we going to return? Okay, so let's return. Um, we'll return a string. We'll say uh, the lesser solution is x equals, and then concatenate on, we'll do string val, I think it is, uh, of the lesser solution. So this is creating that number into a string and then go down here uh we'll concatenate those dots are concatenating concatenating and the greater greater solution is x equals and then concatenate another string value of the greater solution and we'll concatenate a period on there and close out that line and that function. Boom. Okay. All right. Uh, now we have to have the function one solution. And after we do this, we're probably going to have to debug a little bit. So one solution, we have A, B, and let's go into the discriminant. Okay. Uh, we're going to bring in the discriminant because we need that. And actually, we don't need that. What am I, what am I saying? Uh, actually, and we're going to have to fix that in the other thing because I think I put that in. We don't really need that. Okay. So we're going to say that one or, or the solution, let's call it the solution, equals uh, this is going to be negative one times the variable b. And you know we have plus or minus zero, so we don't have to add that part in. Divided by two times the variable a, okay, and then we can return uh, the one solution is x equals, or the one unique solution. We should say unique solution is x equals. We need to concatenate on the solution, and then concatenate a period for proper grammar. Uh, and then just close out the function. JJ colon W to save. Okay, so now I said we have to go back to the other one because I messed that one up. So we're going to go back. We're going to go up to the form handler. Uh, we want to go forward um, and wipe that out, uh, wipe out the com comma. Okay, let's see where we're at. See what errors we get. And we may need to do some debugging. So I'm going to refresh and I'm going to enter in the values of 1, 6, and 8. And I'm going to submit. And it says the lesser solution is x equals negative 3, and the greater solution is x equals negative 3. So we have to debug a little bit. All right, so we did something a little incorrect here, okay? Um, all right, so we're going to go to mathclasses.php, uh, and we didn't do anything with math classes because we're doing functional programming. So going back to DRED here, math functions, that's the one we want. Okay, so... Um, let's take a look and see where we could be messing up. So minus four times a times c, b squared, we got that one right. 
Uh, so pass in the discriminant. The lesser solution and the greater solution, if you remember, they were the same. Okay, why would they be the same? Um, it's almost like we're getting B is equal to negative three. So let's go here. And then the other stuff is, let's just see what we're passing in here to the form handler. So C is C, B is B. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's go to our form. Check that out. Okay. No, let's, sorry. Go to our index. Check that out. Okay, so we've got B, B, name, C, enter the value C. That seems to be all right. Let's, let's run this with a couple other numbers just so I can get a sense of what's going on here. 1, 6, and 8. Let's do 1, 6, and 9. That should be negative 3 and negative 3. The one unique solution is X equals negative 3. That's correct. Okay. Um, Let's do another one. Let's do 1, 7, and 10. That should be negative 2 and negative 5. And we get negative 3.5 and negative 3.5. So there's something wrong with that function. Let's do, okay, let's go back. Uh, so we've got, let's do 4, 7, and 5. So that should be uh, b squared would be 49 minus, uh, no, we want to do something less. Let's do 9 minus 20. That should give us, uh, uh, there are no real solutions. Okay, so that, that part's working, okay? So those two functions are working. So I think the problem that we're having is that our one function is a little bit off, okay? Um, Let's hmm. <laughs> hmm. uh, let's to to work on this. Let's echo something a little bit in addition to this. We'll say uh, do a concatenation. We'll say. Um, the discriminant is, and then we'll just do the discriminant and concatenate on period there, okay? Uh, JJ colon W to save it, and let's go back, and we're gonna do a value, we're gonna do one, six, and eight, and we'll submit. Uh, the discriminant is four, one, six, and eight. So that's B squared, 36 minus four times A times C. So 36 minus 12. The discriminant should be 12. So there is an issue with this discriminant function. Okay, so let's, let's go. Actually, no, let's uh, control G, control G, quit out of there. Uh, so... Returning the discriminant, b squared minus 4 times a times c. Um, that seems correct. Um, let's go up 1 to here to our form handler, where we say the discriminant equals discriminant. Hmm. All right, let's go and um, we'll go into here, go into functions, and we'll also echo a few more things, okay? Just see what's going on here. So I'm going to concatenate, move down to the next line. I'll say the value of A is 
concatenate on A. Um, and then we'll concatenate the value of B is B. Okay. All right. So let's go back and go back to our program here. And we'll try these values again. The value of A is 1. The value of B is 6. Okay. Let's... Um, hmm. Okay, let's change this function. We'll pass in C, and then we'll say what the value of C is. All right, so, and you may be seeing my error, but right now it's a little bit late at night. I am not seeing it. Okay, so we can concatenate. We'll say the value of C. I spelled value wrong. You can see that, but all right. Um, okay, so we saved that, uh, and we want to go back and make sure we pass it in, because otherwise we'll get an error. So we'll go back to our form handler and uh, rewrite this function here. And we'll pass in C. All right, let's try this again. The value of C is 8. So everything is going in there correctly. The discriminant, again, B squared, so 36 minus 4 times eight, so that, oh wait, the discriminant is correct, so it should be four. Okay, so that's all working. Um, but we're getting x equals three and x equals negative three, which are all the same. It should be negative two and negative four. Okay, so what I wanna do now is go back, because I know that one function, there is something incorrect about it, and it is bugging. All right, so the lesser solution, negative 1 times b. Let's check our parentheses. Um, let's rewrite this. You know what? Sometimes it's best to just uh, rewrite. All right, so that's going to be, let's do on the top. So negative 1 times the b variable plus the discriminant. Ah, I spelled discriminant wrong. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's, you know, that is where you can get an, an error. And maybe you see it now. I'm sure you saw this before I did. So discriminant, I have to have a C. Okay. Now we're going to run the program. Okay. Submit. And we get uh, the lesser solution is negative 2, and the greater solution is negative 2. Let me see what else I did wrong here. I have a plus on both, so that's part of the problem. Okay, and save it again. Go back. Now it should be correct. Cross my fingers. And we got negative 4 and negative 2. The discriminant is 4. The value of uh, A is 1. The value of B is 6. Probably should spell value correctly. And the value of C is 8. So all those are working. Those are functions. Do I test my lunk and try classes? Sure. And if I mess up and it gets too late and I have to debug, I'm just going to say you solve it. But let's try it. All right. So we're going to go back into Dear Ed here and go back to my math classes. And I'm going to insert and create, uh, actually, no, before I'm going to do that, JJ, Alt X, web mode. Okay, and uh, now PHP, nice, love that. Okay, so now we're going to create a class, and let's call this class with a capital quadratic. Okay, and within the class, we're going to say public A, public B, and public C, okay? And uh, let's just make sure I close my bracket there so I don't forget. 
we're going to have some methods. I'm making a comment here that we're going to have our methods coming up next. And our first method is going to be a function. We're going to call that discriminant. And the function is going to take in A, B, and C. All right. And then uh, I want to make sure I'm closing my functions here. And then within the function, um, what I'm going to do is figure out what the discriminant is. But first, I'm going to say this A equals the variable A. And let's JJ and then YY, paste, paste. Okay. And then let's replace this with a B. Let's replace this with a B. Whoops, with a B. Replace this with a C. And replace this with a C. Okay. So now I, I'm loving this evil mode. It, it's setting me in the mood for Halloween. Okay. So we got those. So now we're going to figure out what the discriminant or disk we'll call variable is going to be. And again, we're going to use pow. We're going to say uh, this b squared minus four times this a times this uh, c. Okay, and then return uh, the discriminant. Okay. DD, get rid of that, okay? All right, so our function for the discriminant is good. Uh, we're gonna have a function for the two solutions, and that's gonna take in A, B, and uh, let's call it the discriminant. Okay, and um, okay, so now what we're going to say is again, this A equals A, this B equals B, and um, then, uh, yeah, probably want to do that as well say public uh, the discriminant okay and go down here and uh, say this the discriminant equals the discriminant okay all right so now we're gonna have the lesser solution do a camel case there. So the lesser solution is equal to, um, it's going to be negative one times the, whoops, this B minus the power of the discriminant. And we're going to raise it to the 0 0.5 power. Close that out, divide that by two times use this a okay uh, jj then yy paste okay let's just get rid of that one greater and i want to change this to a plus here and that should be good for those and then what we're going to return is um, the Lesser solution of the quadratic is x equals and concatenate on um, lesser solution, concatenate period here, and concatenate, and then and the greater solution of the quadratic is x equals. And then we'll have greater solution, okay? And I think that's it, okay? Okay, um, so that's that function. We're gonna have a one solution function, and that's gonna take in 
A and just B. Okay. And we'll open it and close it. Okay. We'll say, again, we're using this A equals A, this B equals B, and we'll say this. Uh, we don't need anything more, actually. So uh, we're going to have the solution is equal to, um, we're going to have, uh, let's see, negative 1, negative 1 times this b divided by 2 times this a. Okay. And we're just going to return the one solution of the quadratic is, let's do x equals concatenate on the solution, concatenate a period here, and close that line. Okay, and delete, delete for that, and all right, and whoops, let's, yeah. Let's go down here and let's uh, neat this up. So let's do 3DD and then 2D and save it. That's looking tighter. It's looking pretty nice. Um, yeah. All right. So now I have to hook this into the form handler. So I'm going to go to Dear Ed and go up into the form handler. And what I'm going to do here is this is the functional stuff, right? So I'm going to go here and uh, let's go to uh, insert mode. Okay. Um, then visual mode here. I want to take that out and I want to actually comment out this PHP. Okay. And so, so that PHP is all commented out now. So now we're going to have this other PHP here and uh, I didn't want to comment all that PHP out. My bad. Actually, a, a lot of it I didn't want to comment out. Sorry. Uh, let's let's fix that up then. My bad. My bad. All right. Delete all this stuff out. Okay. So that PHP is good. All this stuff is probably good. The, the top part, okay, we don't want to com comment this stuff out. Okay, um, this top part where we get A, B, and C is good, but we want to include once, um, and we want to actually just change this to classes. Okay, and so we're going to say the discriminant equals discriminant A, B, and C if the discriminant. Uh, so no, we have to we have to now create something new. So let's call it um, R solution is a new quadratic okay and then we're going to say here that the discriminant equals our solution when we when we run that discriminant method and that's how we're going to use that okay so now what we're going to do is go down here and we have to do the same thing here. We're calling these methods here. So we're going to have to say our solution and then uh, same thing here, I believe. Our solution. And let's, let's try this and debug. Okay. So I'm going to go back here. And we'll submit, and hopefully we won't get the white screen of death. And we didn't. We actually got uh, close. We should have negative two and negative four. So let's let's take a look at this function, okay? So, or at this class rather. So go to the includes for loop. We'll go to the math classes, and we want to take a look at our two solutions. Ah. And I see what the problem is. We have to have negative one here. All right. Okay, so we just save that file. Let's go back. Let's hit this again. Okay, so this is working. That's working. 
And uh, this should, if we change this to a nine, we should have one solution. So let's see if that works. That works. Okay. And let's do like two, we'll make this like three and seven. That should uh, be no real solutions. All right. So that was the quadratic formula with both uh, functional programming and object or oriented programming in PHP using Emacs and evil mode. Stepping it up towards Halloween. I'm going to be doing more complex math stuff like this. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications as it really helps the channel grow and continues to motivate me to make videos like this. Thank you for watching and have a great day.